There's one judgment for living believers. There's another judgment for tribulation believers. This is revelation stuff that I don't have time to get into today. But it, but it all pertains to the judgment of rewards. Revelation 22 and 12 says this, And behold, I come quickly, and my what? That wasn't everybody. Come on, people. And my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his works. All works committed on earth have eternal results. Every, I want you to please hear this. Every work will yield an eternal outcome. Now think about what you're currently doing and what you've done in the past and what you think you're doing tomorrow because every work that you do, everything you do and think and say and put your hands to, every work will yield an eternal outcome. If you do good by somebody, it's not that you're just doing a good deed. It is an eternal outcome. That's a good work. When you lie on somebody... It is not that just you lied or gossiped about somebody and in three weeks it's over. There is an eternal outcome to your tongue. I'm so glad you're going to be here today. Let's look at bad works burned up. Let's just go ahead and start there. Can we, can we just start there? On your mark, get set. Go. Let's just start at bad works burned up. So according to the previous scripture, we know that bad works will be burned. Okay, Christians can suffer the loss of crowns. I'll explain this later. They can receive less than a full reward or suffer loss altogether. There are Christians who will suffer complete loss. There are Christians in church who will not only suffer the loss of all rewards, they will suffer the loss of salvation and not even know they've suffered the loss of salvation. I'll prove that to you here in just a few moments. See, you're going to want to be here because I'm giving you the bad stuff first so that next week you'll come back for the good stuff. So we understand that we're going to focus on, on four areas that could cause you to lose or suffer loss. Okay, these four areas are this unconfessed sin, good works done with evil motives, polluted offering, and hidden counsels of the heart. So let's look at good works with evil motives. Now remember, we're discussing bad works. Everybody say bad works, bad works. burned up. Burn up. Okay, the first one we're gonna look at is good good works done with evil motives. Okay? Matthew Chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, and it would say this. Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. We have nobody in the church like this. Otherwise, you have what? No reward from your Father in heaven. Now, wait, 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 wait. wait. i got to stop right there. Take heed that you do not. Do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Now, that he's telling you why you shouldn't. This is why you, your motivation should not be that you're seen by them. Okay, let me, let me go on. Then I'll explain it. Uh, because otherwise you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do. God calls people hypocrites sometimes in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory. This is what God doesn't like, that they may get glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their what? Their reward. Their reward. What, is, what does this verse mean by Pastor Josh? This verse means those people in church, I, and I, I even hear people on TV still say this kind of dumb stuff. Whenever people are like, did, did you see what I did? I healed her. I, 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 you're taking glory from God. When somebody, prom, this is what chapter 6 in Matthew means. When somebody promotes themselves, then they are taking their charitable good deeds and they are re- retaining God's glory for themselves. And they are saying, guys, did you see how great I sang that song? Did you, did you see how good I was? 
Praise you, G. Did y'all see how good I was? Did y'all take pictures? And they preach, and somebody gets saved or somebody gets healed, and, and they say themselves, I, I heal. I, I preached the other day. I did such a good job, and, and because of my ministry, somebody got healed. You see, that will cause your reward to get taken away. Because all glory goes to God. I did, I did not do that. Praise God for the healing that just took place. Praise God for the... Sa- when you give God the glory, you get the reward because God, all, God doesn't want the reward. He wants the glory. So if you give God the glory, He'll give you the reward. But when you take God's glory, He'll take your reward. Those are good works with evil motives. There are people that like to be in the spotlight. Look how good I is. The next one I want to look at is called hidden counsel. 1 Corinthians verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 5 says, Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the what? Hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsel of the heart. Then each one's praise will come from God. There are hidden counsel. There are people who do good things with evil motives. And there are people who are motivated by hidden counsel. Now, I could preach this all day long. What do you mean hidden counsel? There are people that do good things with hidden motives or evil counsels because their good things will bring them some kind of earthly reward. They are simply motivated by helping themselves. They are simply motivated by making themselves look good. And God would say they may be hiding it from everybody else, but they have their reward. Okay, the third one is unconfessed sin. Unconfessed sin will cause works to be burned up. First, first John 1 John 1.10, But if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, as you get stronger in God, you can live without sinning. But when you do sin, you have to admit your sin and confess your sin before the Father, and He is just to forgive you. But unconfessed sin will cause you to have works burned up. Let's move to the next one. Whoo. I feel like I needed to give myself a little bit of time on the next one. Y'all ready? What about the rest of you? Okay. The next one is called polluted offering and stolen provision. Mm, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Malachi chapter 1, verses 7 and 8 says, You offer defiled food. On, this is God speaking, on my altar. You offer defiled food on my altar. But you say, in what way have we defiled you? By saying, the table of the Lord is contemptible. And when you offer the blind as a sacrifice, is it not evil? And when you offer the lame and the sick, is it not evil? Offer it to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? And would he accept you favorably, says the Lord? What this basically is saying here... In the Old Testament, you guys know that offerings were brought to the Lord, but they had to be without spot and without blemish. And in the book of Malachi, the priest had begun to give God polluted offering. They started bringing to God, well, this one's got a broken leg, so let's give God that one because it's no good to us. So they started bringing God polluted offerings. They they said, well, this little lamb was born blind, and it's no good to us. Let's give it to God. If your attitude is ever, is no good to me, but I'll give it to God. Then God is saying, give it to your governor and see if you'll go. God is saying, I do not want your polluted offerings. I don't, I don't want your leftovers. If it's no good to you, then what makes you think it's good to me? Yeah. 
But we as believers have begun to have an attitude that whatever I can't use is what I'll give to the ministry. I, I, know, I know this food has an expiration date of six years ago. So now's a good time to take it to the church so that the... So that they can put it in the food pantry. I know that my baby got sick in those clothes. I know that my baby regurgitated on those clothes. But I don't even need to wash them. I'm just going to take them to the storehouse. And the storehouse. I don't want it and I don't need it. Therefore, I'll give it to... Go ahead, sister. Therefore, I'll give it to the church. You're welcome. And God said, when did it when did it cross your mind that you are to give me your leftovers? You, God said in Malachi chapter 1, you have polluted your offerings. That God says, if it's polluted, I don't even want it. Everybody say, can't stop there. Because the book of Malachi has a third chapter. In chapter 3, verses 8 through 11, it says this, Will a man rob God? Remember now, we're just singing this little light of mine. Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have you robbed me? In tithes and in offerings. You, if you do not tithe and you do not give offerings, when I say the word you, under your breath, not out loud, say, that's me. You are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me. I do not want God pointing his finger at Josh Morgan and saying, you have robbed me. Even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. Where does the tithe go? Where does the tithe go? Not all of you just yet. Okay. That there may be food in my house and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, such a blessing that there will not be enough room to receive it. And I will rebuke. Here's where I want to get to. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. For your sake. Who? Wait, wait, wait. Whose sake? Those who? Give into the storehouse. Those who don't give polluted leftovers, but those who say, God, this is what belongs to you. For those who for those of you that are tithing. For those of you that are tithing, he said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Come on, tithers. Somebody say amen. Amen. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit. Come on, nor shall the... For you in the field, says the Lord. When, when you give God what belongs to God, God says, I bless everything else you've got. When, when you give God his ten, he says, now your ninety is blessed. When you, tell, when you tell God, I can't afford to give you your ten, God says, that's all right. Go ahead and keep the ninety-nine because it's got a curse anyway. That's why you keep sitting in your house making good money, saying to yourself, I just can't seem to get ahead. And God's just sitting up there saying, I know. Uh Because you are cursed with a curse, your money, your money has got a curse on it. When you do not tithe, I'm not even talking about offerings. I'm not even talking about almsgiving, which that's your charitable deeds. I'm not even talking first fruit yet. Pastor, you're getting expensive. No, 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 no. Because the more I give to him, the more he blesses me. 
everybody, everybody clapping and raising their hand, they've done it too. Stolen provision. Can, can you believe that God would actually look at us and say, you stole from me? Well, God, you know I earned this. No, you did not. I gave you the ability to do the job. I got you the job. I'm giving you 90% of the paycheck. I just want 10. Well, Lord, let me pay everything else, and then I'll pay you. I'm so glad y'all going to be here today. Bad works. Bad works may go unnoticed on earth, but there is a, an eternal record. An eternal record. The earthly consequence to bad works is evident in the lives of believers who can never seem to obtain God's favor and blessing. 1 Corinthians 3 clearly tells us that Christians who obtain heaven, that they all are not equal. Wait, wait, wait. I thought we were all saved, all going to heaven. We are, but we are not all on the same level. In fact, although they may have heaven, Scripture says that some can suffer great loss. We know everybody's not on the same level. Okay? But notice this. Matthew 7, verses 21 through 23 says that not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Come on now. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven, many will say, many will say, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have I, have I not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice what? Lawlessness. lawlessness. Now, here's your challenge today. Go home and look up lawlessness and see what that falls under. Does it fall under sin? Does it fall under iniquity? Does it fall under disobedience? Does it fall under all of them? Because some people will sit in church and serve God for 40 years, but they have so many bad works. That their salvation will be taken away. Wow. And God said right there in Matthew that one day they'll say, Lord, did we not? Church, you've got to have blessing, power, and glory to do what it... We, did we not cast out devils in your name? Wow. And the Lord will have to say, yes, you did those things. However, yeah. however... You had unconfessed sin. You had hidden counsel. You had polluted offerings. You have, wow. you have stolen my provision. Yeah you, you, yeah, you volunteered in covenant kids, but outside of that, outside of that, you need to take them behind the woodshed. I am never to expect all Christians to have it together. Matter of fact, I still don't have it all together. I do, however, expect us to listen to the very basics of the gospel of Jesus Christ and be able to do the basics. Yes. I'm not asking everybody to be perfect, but if we can't get the basics, and there are people who want the blessing of God, the covering of God, and they refuse to do the basics of what God asked them to do. You yourself could find yourself standing before God one day saying, did I not go to church? Did I not give you an offering? Did I not volunteer? And God may very well say, yes, but you have so many bad works. 